welcome to Play as a Four Letter Word. Uh, hi. hi, Dana. How are you? Hey, Ryan. I'm good. How are you? It's good to see you again after I were, we were just talking like 30 oh. seconds ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thanks so much for doing this podcast with me. And thanks for, uh, you know, be willing to kind of be uh, a guinea pig in my, my new adventure and to try in a different medium and a different material yeah. and a different, you know... Like different to, way to different, uh-huh. different different way to connect with people in the ceramics world. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I thought it would be cool for us to chat because we went to grad school together and we kind of haven't really seen each other since we left in what 2008. I guess not. Like I tried to hook up with you that one time I was passing through. Yeah, but, and I was yeah, busy with kids. kids and yeah. So yeah, so yeah, it's kind of was it 2008, right? That's when you, you graduated. I graduated in 09. Oh, 09. Okay. I, I was there in 08. So I think I saw you. I remember I went to your show in 09. So that was probably yeah. close wow. to the last time I saw you when you were still. You know, in... I've been watching your videos. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's cool. Yeah. That, like, we're still connected. Like, that's what's. I remember you're the person that got me into Facebook originally. Really? Like, back, you were the one that, like, yeah, there's this new thing called Facebook and yeah. you should, like, check it out. I think it's going to be, like, kind of a big thing. And I was like, Remember, I was like reluctant at first. I was like, "Yeah, that's like that MySpace." I never got into MySpace, and I was like, that "MySpace, like, yeah." Yeah, and then I remember like Facebook was like the biggest thing forever. And then like a couple years ago, I got off Facebook because it was too toxic, and I got too involved with political and you know non-productive discussions with people that I was no point in talking to. So I kind of just one day was just like, "F this, delete, 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 delete," and just focused on Instagram because. It's more nice and clean. It's and it's a positive. You can keep it really filtered and just positive yeah. and productive in the way that in the like genre or the things that you're interested in. So, so yeah. So I thought it'd be cool. And you're kind of like getting into Instagram now, right? I yeah. I just kind of teased around with it for a bit. I was more doing Facebook, and then now I'm starting to. I'm starting to think about you know. I mean, like reaching out to people kind of personally, but also starting to think more about selling online and realizing I need to build a base of customers. So right now I'm having fun with it. I'm posting my plants and my yeah, and yeah, yeah. Too, but but I'm sort of keeping that in mind that that I think that's going to be necessary. Yeah. So I guess. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I had uh, some questions I was going to ask you. So all right. I guess the best way to kind of do is like kind of tell your story like how did you get into clay and ceramics to to begin with and kind of wherever you want to start in your clay life journey okay so when I was like seven (laughs) I took a class at the local um Jewish community center took it for three years and it was it was hand building I remember and I really wanted to throw but I was too young and they wouldn't let me Um, and then flash forward, maybe, you know, 10 years later, and I took a class from, um, an artist who was teaching once a week and that was really, really fun. And then I started working for, um, a ceramic co-op. This was in Toronto where I'm I'm from in Canada and I really, really enjoyed it. And they were great people. It's clay design in Toronto if anyone's interested. And we're now lifetime friends. And from there, I actually ended up studying. And I went to, I went to three years of community college there. And then I finished my art degree in um, Nova Scotia at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, which is in Halifax on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Then I had a business for six years, six or seven years. And you were in Nova Scotia? No, but in Halifax. Yeah. And I would, I would travel a little bit and I did a lot of craft shows, a lot of that. I did the farmer's market every Saturday and I really loved it. It was a lot of work, but I, I just couldn't make it work financially. I just couldn't seem to, I tried all these different options, like less people that work for me, more people. I mean, I tried Larger quantity was just really hard. So I thought I would go back to school and get a degree so I could teach and then hopefully take the pressure off making stuff to sell. And so when I wanted to make stuff, it would be because it's something I want, really wanted to make. So then I went to grad school where we met at mm-hmm. Cal State And then I got my MFA there in 2009. And then I had this great residency in Fort Collins 
just totally kind of random. And while I was here, there were some job openings for adjunct faculty. And I ended up with another residency and staying here. And then um, I was originally thinking of going back to California. But at the time, there were very, like, there were no jobs. I shouldn't say very few. There was nothing. Yeah. So I stayed out here and I made a life for myself. And now I do some teaching. I'm teaching a summer class right now in Denver at Arapaho Community College, which is fun. And I'm teaching at the local field. Um, and I write, I write for Pottery Making Illustrated. Yeah, Couple that's really cool. Articles, yeah. That was very um, serendipitous. Indipitous? Yeah. How did that, so how did that opportunity happen to do the writing? You know, I got an email from Jessica Knapp and I, it might be because I put my um, thesis on my website so she could see that I could write and she liked my mm -hmm. work. So she, but she contacted me and asked me to send her some more pictures of work and I did and then I had some story ideas and then I had this idea for a, an article like a series of articles on pattern and I pitched it and they sent me six contracts in the mail so I'm just finishing that off now they're, they're finishing the last one right now last one it'll be pattern and architecture cool how's that yeah. process been to develop like writing because I know we we wrote at school for papers and we write emails yeah. and stuff, but writing it like knowing that you're writing an article that's going to be published in a magazine read by people that kind of know what they're reading. Like they know that like ceramics people are reading it and you're writing to that audience. So how's that like? The first few were, I got to admit they were scary. Like I was, I was just thinking, gosh, I want to, you know, I want to sound like I know what I'm talking about and, and I want to sound, um, I want to sound legit. I mean, just the usual kind of anxiety. Yeah. You want to sound articulate and educated. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, what I ended up doing was I was in, in Bali in the summer of 2012. And I um, got really excited about this kiln build that was going on. So I pitched doing an article about that. And that ended up being my first article. So it was kind of more technical. And it was more about the process of, of building this um kiln called, we called it the Gaia Gamma and it was made with raw bricks so it was fired oh wow uh, it was fired in in place, kind place. Of. yeah yeah um and then I did the two articles about my work and I got, it got easier and easier and now honestly I sit at the computer and I just I just write I have an idea and I just I've learned to just like almost stream of consciousness just sit there and write and then after a a little while I start to I get a paragraph I get a couple of paragraphs and just okay. edit and refine it but what I have to do is have the idea first like what yeah. am I going to be writing about and how am I going to make the ceramic piece that's going to illustrate it because for pottery making illustrated it's it usually you go through a set of, of images towards a finished piece so sometimes that's what holds me back is okay what am I going to make that's going to illustrate pattern and architecture Mm. And that actually I've been sitting on that idea for like three years oh, and, wow. one, and I finally figured it out I think I don't know sneak sneak preview maybe there's this really cool um building I just drove by in Denver oh it's cool the chase building I can send you the picture of it and it's yeah it's the first building I've taken a lot of photographs of buildings um because they're just so interesting to me and, and like the architectural plating and all that stuff but i couldn't think of a pot until i saw this building so i'll send you a picture oh, of it. that's exciting and hopefully it's going to be the thing i make the pot out of sometimes sometimes it, the idea doesn't work and i have to try something else but. so you want to make the article kind of about that building and a pot inspired it, by the yeah, building sort of yeah, and, and then it's also about the general idea about in, inspiring pots by building, let's say, or, you mm -hmm. know, like in, in spite, how to work with an inspiration, how to develop ideas. Because I feel like people really, really are hungry for that. They really want to know, how do I get how do I get the first idea? How do I start? How do I transfer things from that I see in the world into, into clay, right? I mean, that's hard. Right. Have you read the book uh, by Austin Kleon called Steel Like an Artist? No. That's Sounds good... familiar. Steel like, Steel like an Artist. I think I've Yeah, I'm Yeah, not... it's a popular book amongst the art art community, and it's a good... Uh, yeah. 
it's a good read if you're uh, in a way to kind of it articulates the way of uh, a good way of like taking inspiration from other resources, whatever it is in the world that you see, and kind of just gives you like a license or like a kind of gives you like a little more like oh it's, it's okay for me to be influenced by these things and to take yeah. that direct influence and apply it to my work in my own way. Obviously, you don't want to copy, but like you can't reinvent the wheel. You can't. Everything's been I mean, it's so hard to create new shapes and yeah. forms and There's textures. No, so it's really like, just taking everything. Where artists pull ideas out of like we're some kind of magical beings, you know. Like I think what non-artists don't realize is that we we just are kind of allowing ourselves to take things from our environment, you know, yeah. and then riffing on that rather than like thinking everything has to be this beautiful, brilliant idea right from the beginning. Yeah, well, most possible. artists. <laughs> Yeah, I think most artists have to work from personal experience to some. It has to be personal. It doesn't have to be emotional, but it has to be something that like in, inspires you or influences you or you're attracted to or memories that are important to you. That's what makes good art, you know. I think there's people that just make standard like, oh, this is just elements of art, you know, which is awesome. Like color line, shape, value, texture, space, and like rock it, but. When you're putting some of yourself into it, that's really what's awesome. But it's hard for students to be able to understand how to do that. Yeah. Because I understand coming yeah. from a teacher's perspective, you're like, well, you just do it. And then when you're trying to teach, you're like, they're yeah. like, well, where do I get my ideas from? It's like your life. Well, what do you mean? Like, it's challenging. That's a really good book, though. Mm -hmm. And even the, just like yeah. the first like 20, 30 pages of it, like you can, I photocopied like the tw first 20 pages and we read it in my class as like a textbook, not a textbook, but to... yeah, it's on, it's on Amazon. He's done like two other follow up books, but it's really good. You were, yeah. You're just saying you could find him on Amazon. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll find a quote from it and I can put it in the article. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, just the title itself is steal like an artist, you know? Yeah. Like, and I'm not a big reader, but that's one of the books that, I've read it a couple times and you know, it's a good, cool. it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good art book for non like yeah people that aren't like big readers, I guess is a good way to put it. It's like the way it's written is very much like a, like small book. Each page only has like maybe a sentence or like a paragraph. So it's not like a, like a lot oh, of oh, like oh, okay. in-depth reading. It's a lot of like bullet points and illustrations and, it's it's a really easy read. Like you you yeah. could read it if you're a reader, you could read it easily. Read it in like an hour, a couple hours. So okay. yeah, it's a good it's a good resource. Um, so what has like the transition from grad school to to like artist professor, like graduating and then like moving, like oh. that's a big kind of life. That's a, that's really like not to say that's when you grow up, but that's when it's like okay, you're you have the highest degree you're pretty much gonna get. Now you've got to go like adult. Yeah. Like, did that just happen with the with the residency, or did you kind of have like a a plan? Or well, uh, honestly, I had really hoped to find a a full time college job, like a tenure track, um, jump into it. My mom was a university professor, and she had a great job, right? Yeah. I mean, she was pretty pretty smart, pretty brilliant. She wrote. A bunch of books so I mean I'm not necessarily assuming that everyone's gonna get that but I graduated a really sucky time I graduated at 09 and uh, so there had I had apply I applied a whole bunch of jobs and I got I was some on some short lists and I did some traveling and they just didn't work out so you can hear my cats come yeah in. I did hear the cat <laughs> <laughs> she might come in and say hi that's okay if I if I locked her out she'd just scratch at the door yeah, no worries. Um, so, so getting the the residency was great, and then getting I got a, a few adjunct jobs. And at that time, California was there were no adjunct jobs. I mean, there really weren't. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. felt really lucky to get jobs out here, and I really um, learned so much in teaching. At I taught at um, four different different campuses, different schools, mm -hmm. and. Um, and then I guess if you add the guild, it's five. Um, and yeah. they're also, are they all, like, 
that's kind of a cool perspective where you've been in like five different like classrooms or studios. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess they all have their own. Does each kind of studio have their own quirk of like how they run it, or is it just like it's so random? To like without this, naming names, like what are some of the like quirks or what are the like randomness well, of some of these? One school spaces? had. Oh, hush, hush. Hang on, I better introduce her. There she is. Here's my friend. She won't stay up here for a while for too long, but okay. All righties. Okay. It's like, where's mommy? Oh, mommy's talking. Maybe mommy wants to talk to me. Yeah. Um, so, well, one of the schools had the tiniest space when I started working there. They had this, and it was shared with, with um, metal and sculpture. Oh, and that's not good. <laughs> so many um, la- open lab hours, whereas this other school I taught, I had, had this great space, all of this space, but they had hardly any lab time. So it was like, which one would be would be worse or which one would be better? Would you rather have less space but more time or, you know, they're just yeah. thing. And some students were a little bit different. But in general, um, the teaching was the same. Mm-hmm. So you, you learn to you learn to manage different systems. And, yeah. and that's the hardest part, I think, is the different bureaucracies of the different schools because they, they're like similar, but not the same and not totally different yeah and then i guess if if the opportunity came up though you would have a good perspective because you've are <laughs> you being in those different spaces if you got to be in charge you could take the best from everything and oh yeah if i had to design my space yeah yeah totally the That's school like- i'm teaching at right now um is has a wonderful space and a wonderful um hours and wonderful setup so cool Where, um, what school is that that's arapaho community college in denver okay cool yeah. so you're in fort collins now you live yeah, in fort collins drive. how far is it uh it's 75 minutes no traffic Ugh. so it's not something i'm doing permanently i love it for the summer but yeah i, I um the, the local classes unfortunately some of those um our departments have been cut there's been a lot of um downsizing because the economy is better so the art classes are less full oh that sucks <laughs> right so i had there were lots of adjunct jobs because the economy wasn't so great and so people were like i'm just gonna stay in school I'll take an art class why not and now people have jobs waiting for them so they're like okay i want to take my two years i'm going to get through and then I'm go so oh yeah, well, you're keeping busy, so. Yeah, and I'm actually transitioning, hopefully, to making, or sorry, to teaching more workshops. Yeah. And that's a good, a really good thing that I want to get into more. Yeah, I got invited to do my first workshop just recently. Well, I got invited to do one a year ago, and then I, nobody signed up, so I didn't do it. But then I got invited to do another one somewhere else, and so that's exciting. But yeah, that's something that I would like to do. Like, I've never done... I've been to workshops. I've never done a workshop. I know how to teach. I know how to present material. I know how to like, I have a good workshop in mind that I could do that would be super hands on. So one, one of these days, I'm sure it'll, it'll happen. Um, so you're teaching, but then you're also making, right. You're still making. Yep. Do you have a, do you work, do you have a studio at your house or do you? Yeah. So I bought a house, um, a year and a half ago and I have a studio in the basement it's sort of half above ground so I don't feel like I'm in the dungeon or anything and it's so great just to go downstairs and work I love yeah it. yeah so- I have a studio in my garage and it's like a little yeah. corner of the, that's where I am right now it's like my little oh yeah yeah it's my little corner and it's yeah it's like my favorite place in the house <laughs> yeah I mean I like my house but it's nice to like this is my space where I gotta do what I gotta do right make, make pots or make handles or do podcasts and stuff so are you fire? Are you doing? You have an electric kiln, and you're just doing like cone five, cone six stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm firing cone five. I bought one of my favorite kilns. I put in a plug here for cone art, Tucker's cone art, because I'm cool. I'm from Toronto, and they're from just outside of Toronto. And oh, cool! Um, it's a great kiln, and I'm I'm super happy. And you've been doing the cone five oxidation for a while, right? I think pretty much since I graduated from undergrad. Yeah, I mean, I, at, at Fullerton, I did a few 
like I did a strike firing or two and yeah um I'd love to do that again if I had access to a gas film but um it's just easy with oxidation yeah I've been working at home and then glazing at school been a, doing cone 10 like reduction oh but, wow. but that's what I've been doing but like we just decided to switch to cone five, six oxidation that I'll, I'll do in the gas kiln, but the kids like brushing the glazes on. So we're going to brush glazes on and not on everything. I'll still have buckets to dip, but so I've kind of made that decision at work. So then I kind of was like, okay, well now if I'm switching to all cone five cone six, yeah, then I might as well start firing at home. So I'm just starting to now do like cone five Well, I'm doing cone six for now at home oh. but what's the difference what what's the difference between five and six well, to, it, to you it depends on your materials i was firing mainly six actually in my business i fired i had a glaze that liked to be a hot six and a glaze that liked to be a cool six so i had them on different parts of the gallon and right now um i'm using some low fire glazes that tend to boil a little bit too much at cone mm -hmm. six and then i have some other I have some kind of special effects glazes that have been bubbling too. So if I keep it, keep it, oh, little, then it, it doesn't um, cause any problems and all, then all the glazes are happy. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I've been using mostly under glazes and some stuff, so they, they're pretty forgiving. Your, um, ha your sneakers, have you been firing them at 10? The first ones I did, the oh, very, okay. very, very, very first ones I did, I did at school and I did them at cone 10, but then the second batch I did, that I recently pulled out the photographs I've been posting lately. Those are like cone six that I did here at home. Okay. So, and I think that's kind of where I'll be at for a while. I, that sounds, I mean, if you're doing graphics and you're doing, you know, yeah. fun stuff like that, you might yeah. as well. Yeah. It's just, it's easier. It's more consistent. It's yeah. It's one less variable to deal with. So it's, I'm ex I'm ex I'm excited to kind of see. It takes me. It's taken me forever with my new stuff. It's taking me a lot longer to make each piece. But I mean, mm -hmm. so it's like I'm not I'm not filling up the kiln as fast as I would like. But it's okay. Like it's all good, you know. Um, I also noticed that you're really into gardening. Yeah. So That's like cool with my new house, it's been a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's so many like similarities between gardening and like ceramics. Yeah. From, from like a like a patience and a kind of like process mm -hmm. and a kind of like steps and you gotta wait, man. Like you gotta let stuff grow. <laughs> it's like yeah. you gotta just wait. So and it's kind of funny, like you're into those two things. And I guess a lot of streamers people are kind of into gardening, but you know, it's I definitely see in my gardening experience, I definitely notice the same kind of like, yeah, you just have to kind of wait plant something it's like cool like check it tomorrow it's like yeah. it's like checking my mugs like oh they're done i gotta leave them uncovered for a couple oh, days I and we totally agree sometimes totally. it's a matter of like oh it's too hot right now i have to wait a few hours to go out which is so similar to like oh my pot's a little bit too wet i gotta wait a few hours so, i never made that connection that's good yeah when there's in, in a million variables of way things can go wrong yeah often out of your control and it's up to you to kind of like <laughs> zig and zag yeah. to, to kind of deal with i guess you're yeah the, yeah I, it's kind of cool to see your like gardening posts because i'll be scrolling through my thing and it's like pots pots mostly pots ceramics then it's like plants like oh oh shana's oh, oh shana cool <laughs> and then I'm like, oh there's a shana pot and i do like them okay. yeah yeah it's fun it's kind of fun to see like it's, I, I can tell you're really into it and you know what you're talking about and you can identify the plants oh, more gosh. than i can so i'm like well, oh, cool common names not the well yeah but that's more than i know i know like oh well, that's a flower it's a pink flower and yeah and i know i know some stuff but i'm not a i'm definitely not a botanist um so with your process of go now going kind of to your work mm -hmm. like you're i know from like you know working kind of working with you and seeing your work you're you're so into like making parts and then putting parts together, that's kind of one of your fundamental processes, right? Yeah. And, yeah, and then you're also really into like all these different patterns on these different pieces. Definitely. So what's the kind of like, what's the thought process between, between behind all these multiple pieces and patterns and making it look 
like it like how do you how have your what's your process to kind of put all these variables together all together i feel like i i have some more simple works that i'm doing right now and i haven't done work with a lot of pieces in a little while um so i'm not sure i could speak to that if that's what you're thinking of um like, are you spontaneous when you're putting pieces together? Or are you very, like, calculated and planned out? Like, do you sketch each, like, this piece with this part and these patterns? Or are you kind of like, here's a bunch of pieces, and I'm just going to start, like, instinctively grabbing things and putting things together? Usually, like, for a, a new body of work, it starts just, like, that really loose. And I'll make a, lo make a lot of stuff. Like, I have this fear of only having one throne or two pieces. I want to have, like five of this and five of that and five of this and and then it'll be more playful and then the same will be with the decoration but then as i go through the cycle let's say it's the second or the third time that i've made that particular um form i get a little bit more clear on what's going to happen next and what's going to happen here and then i'll jump to a new form if i want to play around again mm. i haven't played that much like I, in grad school i was doing those really kind of fancy attached things and mm -hmm. i've done a little bit of that since but i've kind of got, gotten to like you know, like just more simple form and sort of so there's a simple more simple surface for the decoration mm -hmm. and mean, more and focus more on decoration yeah i mean i'm doing both i guess but it's a little bit less pastiche and a little bit more kind of um my cat just came through sure. Oh, your cat. Yeah. It's wider than mine. Uh, if, I had, if, I had, <laughs> if I could grab her, I'd grab her. But she's um, she's going to find a mouse or something to kill and leave in our living room. It's awful. Uh, she's an indoor-outdoor cat. And she's yeah. just like, you know, her name is She-Ra, which I don't know if you remember uh, He-Man back in the day. It was, an, it was a cartoon. It was an American cartoon. But it was a cartoon when I was a kid. And it was named He-Man. And then... There was a the girl, his like you know cohort was named Shira. She was a warrior princess. When we got my cat to begin with, we got her because we had a, a mouse problem. So we got her with the intention of like, you know, do 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 your cat things. This was like eight years ago, and now she's just part of the family, and she tends to like bring in mice and yeah. leave their corpses in the living room. Yeah, and she's. My kid picked up one, like half of a mouse. Oh man! And like what's this, I'm like, oh my god! Like, Did she eat half of it? Yeah, it's, oh. she's she's gross. I mean, she's a cat. She's a cat. She just does what cats do. So, anyways, um, but yeah, I always, I always, I always liked watching you work. How you would just like make all these. I would just see you like make all these things, and I'd be like, what are these little pieces you make? <laughs> little, little parts you would make. I mean, I always knew, like, it was part of something bigger, but it turned to be like, that's just like a little, you know, and then it turns into, <laughs> you just cut and you just use like a quarter of it or like a slice of it or you'd bend it. I'd be like, oh, it's so like amazing and fun to watch. Like, the, oh, cool. I always liked watching your process. And I think I took some of that, like, you know, looking back on my work in grad school, I think I probably was a little bit influenced by you because I know I started doing more of that, like throwing different elements and just attaching them together to make. I mean, our work was way different, but I think the idea of just, like, making the parts and then the parts become the larger form, I definitely appreciate that part of your, your process. And I definitely like the pattern, because I really like pattern and stuff, too. So, um, um, how has, so I know you're kind of new on the Instagram thing, but what about, like, how do you think, like, social media is changing? Is social media changing your art practice? I feel like... I learn stuff on social media now. Like I, I, I'm trying to remember what the technique was. Oh, I never pull handles off the cup yeah. because um, they. I just pull them off, mm -hmm. and I and I learned it in school, and I probably figured it out. And and I, I've just found other ways to do it. I make them separately, and then someone was doing it on Instagram, and there was a, like a discussion about it, and they said, "Well, let those little." the little lugs that you're going to stick on, let them stiffen up a little bit. So I did that. And suddenly I can pull handles off the cup, off the, right, the body and the mug. And I was oh, like, yeah. Woo I mean, you know, this is like 30 years in. I'm learning new stuff. I love it. Yeah. That's Instagram. It, it, man. I mean, I think there's so much 
it's hard because I can get sucked into it or I'm like on it and just looking at things and just going in, going into like stalking people's profiles and looking at videos they posted a long time ago. Cause it's just like interesting. And, um, but I've learned so much on social media. Like I learned so much on Instagram. Like, I feel like it's, I feel like since I really took my life on social media, more like not a job, but more of like, I'm here to like, connect with other ceramics people and learn about ceramics and and kind of took it more of like not school or a job but took it more serious like that i feel like it's gotten me a lot i feel like i've improved and grown a lot as an artist just because of building relationships with some people and some people giving me like honest feedback because i don't know about you i don't get critiqued anymore no it's all up to us (laughs) yeah and it's hard like people are generally like oh like everything's great yeah and try not to be too harsh, you know, because we're our own worst. Yeah. Yeah. But I think there's some good, I know, so there's one person that I've kind of, uh, has helped me a lot, Tim Kowalczyk, who was on the podcast a couple episodes ago, who does the Cardboard Cups. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so he, like, he messaged me, like, a couple, it was, like, two years ago, like, two years ago, I think, when I first kind of started getting a little more serious, and he was like, hey, can I give you some, like, constructive criticism and i was like yes he's like you need to work on your handles i'm like oh I'm like okay thanks and i kind of looked i was like i do need to work on my handles and, and it was like good like i kind of had it in the back of my head like oh like maybe that's something i need to do but no one said anything so maybe it's just fine and mm. it's kind of hard because i think it as not in an academic setting we don't get the people to tell us maybe how it really how maybe it re- they really see it because it's like well this isn't ac- we're not in academia anymore, so. Uh huh. Totally. It's rough. I think like that's like someone once said to me, "That's when you know you're you're ready to graduate is when you can do that for yourself." Yeah. And not that it isn't nice to have that kind of feedback because we can get in in loops too. I just actually had a conversation with someone too about my handles, and it's like the handle's kind of big, don't you think? And I was. I realize that, you know, like, I think a handle is really personal. And I yeah. think, like, I used to make smaller ones until um, I decided to make them bigger because I felt like like men weren't fitting their hands into my handles for my cups. And then maybe they just got too big and I stopped noticing. Or, you know what I mean? I mean, I think there's a range, like, of handles for different hands. I think one, for I like sure. the range. But just like you kind of get caught in this cycle of doing something the way you've been doing it. And then For you sure. forget. <laughs> yeah. And it's easy to get stuck. Like, this is the way I make handles now. I'm just making my handles. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, oh, like I know I've started to be like when I make a batch of mugs, I'm like, I'm going to make like some are going to be more like one finger handles and some are going to be more like two finger handles. And I'm yeah. kind of more conscious of like making like a couple different sized handles because like you said, yeah. different people have different people hold cups different ways and you know yeah yeah some people like like i tend to like a one finger handle like i'm definitely like uh like one finger like i like yeah i generally like one finger handles i generally like smaller cups because sometimes i don't like it when i have a big cup of coffee and if i drink it too slow then it's like cold so i like smaller cups huge cup of coffee yeah and i know most people (laughs) like big fat cups of coffee because I started, I've, you know, I've started to get some good feedback over the last like year or so. I've been selling more work and I've been posting work and people would be like, I know for a while I would post it and I would get messages like, how many ounces is that? Like, how tall is that? Like, how big is it? I had people that wanted to buy it, but they're oh. like, like, I need to know how big that cup is. Cause I don't want, and mostly it was people cause they was like, I don't want a small cup. I want bigger cups. And I'm, and in my brain to me personally, I'm like, I don't like really big I like my coffee cups like 10 to 12 ounces, 8 to 12 ounces probably. That's my ideal like size that I like to personally use. And then I found out a lot of people like to have like 12 to 16 or 18 ounce coffee mugs. I was like, oh, well, I guess I should try start making, paying attention to what people want if I'm trying to sell pottery. Like, oh, you want yeah. a bigger, you want a bigger mug? I'll make bigger mugs. Cool. And then yeah. I'm getting like neat little ones for kids because I made some kids mugs before. So I'm like, yeah, like, I should start making kids mugs again. So, totally. yeah. like little kids sneaker mugs. <laughs> I don't know. 
You can make little kids' shoes mugs. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Like, little kids, but yeah, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I actually have a friend that's getting married. Not getting married. She's having a baby. It's my wife's friend. She's having a baby, and um, she's like, oh, those are really cool. I'm like, oh, I'm glad you like it. And it's like in my head, I'm like, I'll make you and your baby a sneaker mugs for your baby gift. Hmm. So... Um, and then I got one more question and then I'm going to, do you have your phone with you? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to send you, um, the, the questions I got from online, but while I send you, while I send you the questions, um, I have another, I have a a kind of a a general question. Do you call yourself an artist or a potter? I I know it's kind of a dumb question that we've probably been asked a million times, but, or do you call yourself a ceramicist or a potter or an artist? Uh, usually I call myself a ceramic artist just because I think it makes the most the most clear to, to the majority of people. Yeah. Usually if there's like a form like at the doctor's office or something, I call myself an artist. I don't think they even yeah. get that idea of ceramics. Yeah. Um, you I call yourself like, a potter? I have sometimes if they look at me a little blankly when I say ceramic artist. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I say that to mean that I make vessels instead of sculptures. Sculptures, Yeah. Yeah. It's just dumb labels. (laughs) Uh Where did you, how did you send those to me in, in, in the, on your Instagram? producing on GarageBand and making music on GarageBand to put in my Instagram videos because I had time to screw around on my phone. Is and that then, your music? You said, I've yeah. said, like, you're composing that? Yeah, I just do it on GarageBand. That's incredible. I've actually noticed that, and I was wanting to, to ask you, like, for real? Yeah, no, I mean, Ryan, well, right? I, don't, I don't like, what is that? have you ever been on GarageBand? Um, I used it to record, but nothing really. Yeah, so they have all these like, um, like they're called live loops. Oh, so it's just okay. like a, it's just like a loop, like a like a drum beat, and it just like repeats itself. And there's different, but yeah, you just take all the uh, all the beats and all the live loops, and you just kind of pick and choose the ones you want, and time them out, and space them out, and 
I mean, when I was in high school, I played I played music a little bit when I was in high school. Not very well, but I learned to play guitar and bass and have a basic under. And I listen to a lot of music, so I have a basic understanding yeah. of like how a song is made. And generally, I just get a bass line and a drum beat and find some other instruments that sound cool. But yeah, like the the music for the intro to the the podcast, like that's yeah. my that's my song that I. Yeah. And in my head, I've like in my head, I'm like. I should like I should like rap over this like I should, I should like I should like yeah yeah but I haven't but I'm like uh, it would be really funny if I like actually put okay. lyrics to yeah. it it's hilarious and like but make it ceramics lyrics oh totally yeah like you know yeah I don't know anyway um, if you go to the next uh, the next yeah. image they sent you this is where you compose something on the fly and edit it in yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> I got a I got a bunch in I got a bunch in the bank that I I have like ten songs that I I, I kind of can cycle through. So mm-hmm. uh, the next one is from Mike Regan or Mike FX. What do you enjoy most about ceramics or just working with clay? It's just always it endlessly fascinates me. Like it endlessly gives me um, water for the imagination. I, there's it's fun to like it's fun to throw it's fun to work with it i feel like there's that joy of making finished stuff like i love that i love making stuff um and that people can use it but i just like just working with clay is just um it's just fun i don't magical why like why i mean when did you know that this was like do you, do you kind of remember when you realized, like, when you were younger, like, oh, this is, like, what I'm, like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? I, it was maybe, like, six months into the, the job that I had, or maybe even earlier, where I just thought, yeah, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing, yeah. and then it's always been like that, like, this is what I do. Yeah. You know? And I've painted two, um, separately, and, um, and I, but I can put painting aside and I can't put clay aside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I, I feel the same way. It's like, yeah. I can't wait to retire from teaching and just be an artist. Yeah. That's like the, the, yeah. one of these days. Um, next question is also from Mike Regan. Mm-hmm. And he asks, uh, favorite form to throw? Mugs, plates, bowls, etc. Like, what's your favorite thing to make? I, I really enjoy cups. I just really enjoy that simple form and how you can have create a really elegant um, shape from something so simple. And then it's such a great service to decorate. But I also like variety. So I really like mixing it up. Like I couldn't make cups forever. I'd have to also make plates. And then I also want to make um like I, the certain things of, that I'm already making that I, I realize I need to stock back up on like these plates that I've been making and then I took a break and I made some some of those constructed constructed forms actually these little um dishes that I've never really made before and then I'll go back and I'll make um bowls or something just because um it's been a while I think I really enjoy the feeling of throwing bowls I love that like beautiful curve yeah. And yeah, getting that rib in there and getting that that rib just perfectly like, fit in that bowl is it's also hard so sometimes i get frustrated you know like cups i find are more easy so um i'd say cups bowls and then kind of everything else is kind of equal yeah. for that yeah um so if you remember if you go to the next the next okay. uh question Keeps time now. Yeah. Uh, so, George, remember George? George Brisson? Yeah. He had yeah. he had a bunch of good questions. So. Oh wow! So um, first no, one. No, no, yeah. Not this question. <laughs> so what do you think the what do you think is the difference between an artist and a craftsman, and what would you consider yourself? Both. Yeah. Yeah. Um. They kind of lead into each other. Yeah. You're not a yeah. craftsman making the same thing over and over again, but you're also just not a artist painting paintings. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the simple answer is both. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of feel the same way. It's hard. It would hard to put. I would have a hard time identifying as one. Either, you know, I like making stuff. That's basically what it comes down to. And mm. if you find artistic value in it, cool. I like to make stuff. Um, where do you? Another next question from George is where do you typically sell your work? So I'm kind of in transition right now. Um, I have work in some different shows. So there's like group show work here and there. And then I have a small amount of work at Clay Arts Vegas in Las Vegas. And then um, I have some work at Emoca in Pomona. Yeah, I was actually there it's last week. And I saw your, I saw, yeah, it's still there. It's just because I haven't heard from them in a little while. I should maybe refresh it some someday. Yeah. Uh, um, and I just joined a couple local co-ops here in Fort, one in Fort Collins and one in Greeley, and and I'm really liking the community. Um, but I, what I really want to do is move more to selling online, just so I can yeah. um, have a little more control. And then um, I think that's the. I think it's market. a lot of people seem to be doing well selling online. It's just marketing and posting, and I think like posting those videos. I think that'll help. Because I feel like people, I think your your work is pretty dynamic. Like your work is pretty interesting, and it has a lot of. There's a lot of like steps in your. I mean, I I don't know your process exactly, but I imagine you have quite a few steps in your process to get to the final thing. So, right. I think documenting those steps and showing people how you make it and just cramming in as many hashtags as you can just to get more <laughs> eyes on your work. And I mean, I, it's, I mean, that's the game. That's that's the game. You know. Yeah, if you want to sell online. I mean, I'm not a pro at selling that. online, but the the because people will search by it, the hashtag. So someone will just look look up hashtag ceramics and they'll see everybody that's posted hashtag ceramics. So then you'll get more eyes on you than just not putting any hashtags. I kind of forgot all about hashtags for the last. Yeah, time. hashtags are important. <laughs> oh, I remembered them when I was talking about your podcast. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just the, that's just the metrics and the analytic, how the metrics and analytics work to get eye, eyeballs on your stuff. And there's millions and millions of people on Instagram every day. Yeah. And there's not, I wouldn't say millions of people looking at ceramics every day. I mean, maybe globally millions of people, but there's thousands of people that are looking at ceramics every day, looking for new things. And, you know, I think a lot of people, I think your process, like you painting some of those things and you just throwing and putting things together, like just set it up and put on a time lapse and just go for, okay. like, make a piece. I, I think you'll probably get a, a good response because, and I think part of it is just to not worry so much about how many likes you get is just keep posting stuff. Right. Just really play the long game, you know, it's just mm -hmm. like, oh, if you're going to sell online, like you got to start getting your Yeah. You got to get more people to see your stuff. Yeah. And I feel like people will want your stuff once they're seeing it on like the, the more like the Instagram ceramics community, like yeah, the people that are buying mugs, the collector people that are, cause there's like people I follow that don't make ceramics. They just buy ceramics and like post their collections and they yeah. like live, they like live with ceramics and they're nice. like, they're like, people. they're like, the, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they will, I bet you they would love your stuff, but oh. You know, some of them follow me, so I'll they'll they'll be seeing your stuff. Well, I'm gonna be posting more and more. My plan is to try to ramp up to the holiday season this year. So. Yeah, I think we're all I think we're all ramping up to the holiday season. I know, but every year I go, okay, this is the year, and then if it gets to like September, I'm like, oh, I think I missed the missed the arc. So I'm gonna, this year is the year I'm really gonna try. Yeah, just start now, and you know, just plan ahead for some online sales and you know you can kind of hype it up a little and put some like hey i'm gonna have a big update on this day at this time and yeah we I mean, were sometimes it works about, sometimes it doesn't how about that and selling on etsy versus the website and um i feel like everybody does sell on etsy but um, i think etsy's etsy's easy because it's already set up and they already have their like, they already have their like system set up, so it's easy to like put a put a piece up and list it the way they want you to list it with the the things that you can categorize. Okay. And then there's already a built-in, there's kind of a built-in market already in in 
in Etsy, but I think if you're not, I think if you're not well established at this point on Etsy, if you're new to Etsy, I think it's harder to get more people to see your your stuff. And then Etsy's right. recently changed to this like they want everybody to do free shipping to compete oh. with to compete with like Amazon. So that I mean the trick is oh just just price your work with the shipping included, but Yeah. I don't know. Not everybody's doing it and and then having your own website, it's as long as you can manage it and you have the like way to the e-commerce to sell, I definitely see the benefit of having your own website because I know I've heard on the Potter's cast because Paul blaze on the Potter's cast talks about this a lot and he's very against Etsy because he's like Etsy owns. It's not like Etsy owns your work, but Etsy kind of owns your work. Like they don't own your work, but they're kind of the filter and they're kind of the, the middleman. That's kind of like, they're taking a chunk and they're and the customers kind of their customer. And if the customer is getting to okay. Etsy through your website or through your social media, yeah, why not just push them to your website as opposed to pushing them to Etsy? Yeah, I think so I'm going to try that first because I have a really good. I have a. I've been subscribing to this um, website service called um, iCompendium. Mm-hmm. One of the process. Uh, Fullerton told me about it that he uses it and I pay an annual fee and mm-hmm. it's all set up for artists so it's it's image galleries it's resumes it's yeah. um, artist statements and there's repositories for videos and stuff and then I can sell online so yeah that's I'm cool I'm gonna try that first partly for the stuff you were talking about but also like I once went on Etsy to look for ceramic artists and I had the hardest time finding anything of quality when I entered it's in. It's a lot of like commercially stuff or. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to make it come up with something great. So. Like some unique. Yeah, I think it's, right? it's, 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 Etsy's a weird place. But like most, all my Etsy sales go through my Instagram. Right. Or I mean, I would say 99, 95% of it is through Instagram. If people are like on my Instagram, they see my work and it's like click the link in my bio and it takes them to Etsy. But if that link was taking them to my website or another. Yeah. I know like Amazon, Amazon is doing one. I think there's Shopify is another platform. And and you can just do your own website and do it through like uh, an add on on whatever. How are you I'll try my own website first and then I can add that stuff on. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you already have it set up on your own website, I think that's I think I'm gonna try it. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Try. This, is, yeah. this is the year. This is the year I'm really gonna make it happen. Yeah. I mean you just gotta do it. And even if it doesn't happen this year, you just gotta keep going. You just gotta yeah. be like, this is it. Like selling online is the future. So you gotta start selling online. And it's not like the work that we make goes bad i mean if you don't sell it this year you can yeah. sell it this year that's why i it's never like, it's my, not like milk <laughs> i never put the date on my pot. yeah i stopped doing that too <laughs> i stopped doing that if, like uh six or seven years ago like 2011 2012 2013 somewhere in there i was like i i should stop putting my name my i put my name but yeah. why, why am i putting the date you know like it's get in trouble with that yeah yeah. Well, this is from five years ago. Like, why are you giving this to me for Christmas? You made this five years yeah. ago. Like, oh, sh- exactly. Ha- Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, that's happened to me. Yeah. Um, next question from George is, does the school you go to matter or is it more about the work ethic you have to push your creativity forward? I was hoping we would get to this question, actually. It's a good question. Um I think that the school can really make your work ethic happen and really make you more inspired. I think, yeah, you got to have your own like fire and wanting to do what you want to do, but you can really like imagine how much more you can accelerate if you're in a school that's got that kind of inherent, like do your best vibe and pushes you and has great teachers and, really um isn't really inspiring so i think yeah anyone could push through on their own but it's so much better if you find a school that's really really super awesome like the school i went to for undergrad was just amazing and i i met so many great people and i was 
pushed in so many different directions and I learned so much. Um, I think any, any art school, you know, any school after that was kind of, it could be hard to, to measure up to it. Um, so I think, yeah, and finding a good fit, especially as you get into grad school, finding a good fit with your uh, advisors is, is also really important. Finding ones that are going to be able to help you, you know, at, at a certain point, you're not going to be just one student needing to do the basics and go through, you know, jump through the hoops like you need. Someone who can really, you know, relate to what you're doing and give you some good ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I can't yeah, really definitely the community and the, the people. Yeah. The people is what matters the most. Yeah. You have any, I mean, facilities are facilities. And I've always had the like, oh, there's clay, there's a kiln, there's a wheel. Cool. Like, we can make it work. As long as we have the, the tools and materials, you know, like, that's the most important thing. And then, like... If it's the right people, then it's awesome, you know? If it's the right environment with the right support and the right kind of community yeah. or the right, like, support, yeah. it's really, like, just people yeah. that are going to push you and support you and challenge you when you need to be challenged. Like, yeah, those are definitely the most important. And it has to be the right fit for your personality because there's certain – I'm sure there's certain personalities of a, a studio or a, a – a workspace or a, or a school where it doesn't fit your personality. Maybe they're really reserved and quiet and very serious and earbuds in and you're like fucking music up and <laughs> pounding beers in the back, like <laughs> making shit like, and then you wouldn't fit in there. And then you might be the quiet guy and you got a bunch of savages, you know? Yeah. Whatever. Too, like, like, like different kilns and different equipment can really, for some people really make the experience like if you're a wood fire and you go to a school that's like got this amazing wood fire kiln and faculty that are really familiar with it you know pretty good chance your person if you're a wood fire too your personality might end up meshing anyway yeah you know? so i think that is important but i think it's all it's the whole package it's the people are really really important the faculty and um yeah the other the other students too i think and i think having variety i think um, more and more, I think, um, in terms of like going to different schools, like find a school in a totally other part of the country. You oh, know, wow. I li really like the um, special studies that people are doing, the postbacks. I think those are a really good idea because you can get in another school without having mm -hmm. to have, go through the whole MFA or MA application. So I think in that, the more more people you have who know you and know who you are and like your work and you and can recommend things to you the better so yeah i think those things can really help yeah i think definitely having different perspectives on your work is really yeah. helpful i remember when we were at cal state fullerton i always liked when ken takahashi would talk to, to oh man like yeah. i remember like because he was a sculpture guy yeah but he was able to come to me and look at my pots and talk to my pot talk to me about my pots and would tell me things that i was like damn like that's good shit man like yeah we were so lucky to have that him there and then the you know just such a different point of view and, and yeah him and vince and nobu were all very different yeah and all in their own ways and yeah it was it was a uh, yeah I, I have a lot of good memories of cal state fullerton uh next question from george is what advice would you give to any young potter trying to do ceramics for a living <laughs> take care of your body Take care of your body. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, um, I, I think, well, I mean, if you're trying to make that your main source of, of income, you're going to have to make a lot of pots. So you're going to have to be able to work really hard for a long time and, and just, you know, make, like do, do yoga, do Pilates, do stretching, do whatever you have to do to, yeah. to keep, to be able to do that. Cause it's, it is, it's a lot of physical labor. So you, yeah. You gotta be okay with that, or else you go into this like the more designy um area, but then you have to market your work more. So um yeah. you know, there's sort of the di different ways to do it. Um yeah. You still do yoga? I do, I did yoga today actually. Yeah, I remember you were yeah. always like, I gotta go do I'm going to do yoga. Like I'll be back. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I, I had I had to take care of my body. Yeah, I know, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely, that's good advice. Take care of your body. Yeah. 
mm, last question from George is who has been who has been your biggest influence? Um, I think you know who I'm gonna say. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be an artist. It could be oh, just in okay. life. Ceramic. I mean, oh. I mean, I would say I kind of have an idea who you're gonna say. Yeah. As a ceramic artist, but yeah. Well, so yeah, as a ceramic artist, probably Julia Galloway, just because of of the nature of her work and her personality and the way she thinks about making pods and talking about pods. Um, but yeah, there has been. There have been so many other um, artists and, and ceramic artists that have been influences. Um, um, but she's probably the one, the biggest one. I took a class with her right before I did grad school, and it was pretty yeah. pretty life-changing. And, and a lot of it was was the way that, like, the quality of, of her kind of attention to detail and to um, – to looking at like historical imagery and to, to being a good, like good craftsperson, being careful. So there were a whole, a whole, all these different sides to it that really got affirmed for me when I, when I studied with her and as a teacher, I try to be as good of a teacher as, as her too. Yeah. Do you have any new ceramic artists that you've recently discovered that you think is really exciting or? Oh, I wish I, I need to think about that ahead of time. Um, yeah, I mean. But you're still, you're still finding some new stuff that's, ex, that's excited, yeah. excites you? Yeah, I just bought a couple of mugs from um, Eva Lee's Champagne. Mm -hmm. She just, um, she just moved to Bali actually to be the new um, director at Gaia Ceramics. Oh, cool. How's that? That Gaia, is that awesome oh, there? It's really great. It's it'll blow your mind yeah i've seen images and that place looks amazing and they seem like really cool people too oh yeah everyone's really great i mean they're it's like you're going to this really cool part of the world with clay people around you know so it's it's awesome sign, <laughs> really, me, sign me up yeah but she sold, she sold a bunch of work before she left and so i ordered some mugs from her from montana and they're gorgeous and send you a picture of it because yeah, yeah. they're really loose kind of loose decoration really bright color um really different kind of decoration but when you when you look at them you can probably see why i like them because they're just so bright and fun and yeah exciting cool yeah. um the kind of one of the questions i've been asking people on this podcast because it's like clay is a four-letter word kind of oh, yeah kind of going to the like clay happens or yeah you know. I always think of you with that, actually. I mentioned that to one of my students uh, last week. I said, I had a friend in grad school who used to say, Clay happens. Clay, ha Clay happens, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. There's an, uh, yeah. So yeah. have you had any major ceramics disasters that you that stand out in your mind as like low points of your life as a ceramic artist? <laughs> well, there was in the making thing. sense? There was, oh, and the making. I was gonna say there was a time I was at a craft show and the wind blew my booth over. Oh and, my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty it. big disaster. Yeah, but, like you know, all your stuff got broken. No, just the stuff on one shelf. And you oh, know, God. like an hour later, someone showed up with an envelope full of cash. I mean, it was just oh. so sweet, you know. That's um, cool. Yeah, but I just, you know, I've been having these paneling problems with my glazes still, and it's frustrating and. Um, I think I might have figured that out with the, um, the tech at my school at, at Arapahoe is doing this really slow cooling and that might help. Yeah. It's burning out one of my colors, but that's probably my biggest Achilles heel. And that's the glaze, like, because I mix so many glazes together. Yeah, I remember you were always doing tests. Anything. I've always had stuff where it's like, to write most of the time, but not enough of the time to make me totally happy. So I guess that's my biggest. And those like, are all glazes that you're mixing up? Mostly? No, I, there's, I mix them. So I have a few that I mix up, and then I use a lot of commercial glazes for okay. um, for the flowers, you know, for the smaller color areas. Yeah. Um, have you had, and you talked about taking care of your body. Have you had any injuries or like yeah, I physical have a lot things? Of chronic stuff i've got chronic back pain and shoulder pain so i um it's actually one of the reasons i went back to school was to not have to make pots all the time yeah 
Um, so I throw standing up and I'm actually working with this um, Pilates instructor to help me hold myself better because I still tend to lean over to the side when to look at the piece on the side. So he's yeah. helping just really at a subtle level, like how to, how to balance my weight so that when I'm doing that, I'm not hurting myself. So, so working on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, about a year and a year or so ago, I, I moved to a stand up wheel and, and it's just like, Oh yeah, I could see this is at school. Yeah. I'll throw at school. I'll throw sitting down all the time, but even at school, I have one wheel that's on cinder blocks to, to stand yeah. on. And some of my kids like it and it's there. And at home I got my wheel on the cinder box. Which is good. So when my kid's out here, he can't really mess with it yet. Because ah. I'll bring my four-year-old out to the garage once in a while, and we'll kind of yeah. play around. And he likes to just step on the pedal. And I need to bring it down and like actually work with him, but it's hard to. I don't know. That'll be a cool video, though. I'll do that one of these days and oh, get him totally. to throw. And it'll be a, it'll be, a, it'll be yeah. super cute. I'm sure. Get covered in it. And... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess that's it for our uh, podcast kind of conversation slash interview. Shana, thanks again for uh, playing along with me. Do you want to give any um, like plugs or any ways people get in contact with you if they want to purchase your work or see your stuff? Like where should they go? Yeah. So my website's the easiest, just www.shanasaleff.com. And if you want to email me, you can just hit the contact Shana link and it'll send you to a form that you fill out and then I get your email and I'm also on Instagram at Shana Salaf and you can find me on Facebook too if you if you want I don't mind drop me a line cool so, a couple of months from now I'm hopefully selling on my website so there'll be anyone who who wants to like sign up um, with the contact Shana I can send them a little notice when I start selling. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks again for uh, t- talking. It's good to catch up and kind of see where you're at now. Sure. So nice to see you, Ryan. Yeah. Are you going in Sika oh. next year? Yeah, I've been trying to go every year now. It's so much cool. fun. I haven't, been, I haven't been since 2009. Because you're teaching and working. Yeah. Well, I think getting married and having kids and oh, like, okay. Like I got, what happened was I got, I graduated, I got my, I got my degree. Hmm. And then right after I got my degree, like that summer, I bought a house and it was a total dump of a house. Uh, so I like fixed it up. And then in 2013, that was in 2008. And then in 2013, yeah. I sold it and bought another house and that was a fixer. And I was there for like four years. And then in 2017, I, I sold that house and then moved <laughs> to the house I'm at now with our two kids. And this house needs a bunch of, not a bunch of work, but this house is like, it's like livable for now. And then in like t- 15 years when my kids are a little older then we'll fix it up because they're just going to thrash it so so like i spent 10 years like eight or nine years of like getting married and you know learning about home repair and home remodeling and i've remodeled remodeled two kitchens and i can do tile and bathrooms and wow so yeah i kind of wish part of me wishes i just bought a house and fixed it up and stayed there and just started making ceramics but it's cool. I'm here now, so. Oh, you've learned really good good things that you can always use. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the rest of your life, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Anyways, that was a bit of a tangent at the end, but uh, I'll uh, I'll I'm gonna hit stop and see on the so- other side of the stop button. But uh, thanks for having this conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. All right. Thanks. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that conversation I had with Shana Saloff. It was really good for me to catch up with her. I haven't seen her in about 10 years. I think we chatted a couple times on Facebook or Instagram, but it was really good to see her and catch up. Uh, one, of the good, one of the reasons I did this podcast was it was a good excuse to call people up and reconnect to some old friends that I haven't seen or talked to in a while. And then also a good excuse for me to call people that I think are interesting or cool or have cool stories to tell. So... Hopefully i got some good stories coming up in the future and some interesting guests with different perspectives at, in the ceramics world. Um, anyways, uh, if you're watching or listening to this, uh, if you like, rate, review, and subscribe on whatever you're listening to, especially if you're on 
iTunes and Spotify and uh, YouTube. I appreciate the subscriptions and the comments and the likes. Um, if you're interested, I have some stickers I'm giving away. Uh, if you send me a direct message at Clay as a four letter word on Instagram, I will send you some stickers free of charge. I'll, I'll pay for the shipping. You just give me your address. And if you do want stickers, I appreciate it if you're one of those likers and subscribers and commenters. Um, next week, I have a big announcement to make, kind of going with the swag, uh, clay paraphernalia, as I like to call it. You know, stuff that has to do with ceramics, but not ceramics. It's like paraphernalia, I think. I don't know. Anyways. Once again, special thanks to Shane Asawa for being my guest and my wife and kids for putting up with me. Uh, new episode every Tuesday. Uh, follow at Clay is a Four Letter Word and at Ryan Reich Ceramics on Instagram. Also, you can find it on Facebook. If you have any questions for future guests, I'll be posting that in the stories the day before or the day of I'm doing the interview. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, my name is Ryan Reich, and thanks again for hanging out with me and Shana today on Clay is a Four Letter Word. Peace.